Argo is enabling us to secure Elastic. Uh, so I am Angel Rios. Um, I'm the team lead for the security engineering team at Elastic. I'm based in Massachusetts. I've been at Elastic for three and a half years. And prior to Elastic, I worked in the financial services um, uh, area. And I was still responsible for security operations, threat intelligence, and identity access management. Um, and I have a bachelor's in information technology. Hey folks, I'm Chris Cotaya, I'm based in Malta. I've been as a security engineer with Elastic for the past two and almost half uh, years. And prior to Elastic, I've worked with an InfoSec on the payment industry. So we're gonna go through what we do at Elastic. Um, we'll give you a high level uh, overview of the InfoSec environment, uh, the data sources that uh, we feed into our platforms. Um, but most importantly, the Argo story, our journey, how we uh, found Argo, where we, how we're using it today, where we're going. Uh, we're going to deep dive some of our use cases. Um, we're going to give you a, a quick uh, walkthrough of how we've developed a kind of an internal community and how uh, Argo is actually being uh, used and expanded across Elastic. Uh, and also um, how all of us um, can continue supporting the Argo project um, in joining the community. So uh, background here, uh, the security engineering team, uh, we're responsible for InfoSec's infrastructure and services. We host everything uh, in Kubernetes. Um, and uh, our main job is to keep up the services, uh, build the infrastructure, but give uh, the detection team visibility into what is happening in our environment. And we do this by using um, our file B and out of B in, uh, our connectors to feed data into the stack um, so our detection team can build those detections. Uh, but most importantly, we also uh, are kind of the main feedback loop to the product team. Uh, we te test build candidates before they're released uh, so we can use those features in a real life setting. So we use all the production data. Uh, we make sure that the product can scale and the features do what they're supposed to do. Uh, so hopefully we find it, the issues before our customers do. And we also provide feedback to how we can make the product better and um, try to add uh, new features into the roadmap uh, that customers can eventually use. <clears throat> uh, so our InfoSec team is, uh, is made up of several uh, different teams uh, as you could, as other uh, InfoSec teams have. Uh, but our main goal here is to make our data completely uh, transparent and allow other folks to leverage uh, everything that we collect. Uh, we don't want to operate in a vacuum. We, we're trying to decentralize security because it's everyone's responsibility to protect an organization. Uh, so we take um, all of uh, the kind of the high level roadmaps and um, uh, plans of each of the teams and uh, it's all built into the stack. The stack is at the heart of everything that we do. Um, and we're going to give you a quick example of how we do that. Um, uh, for folks who are not familiar with uh, the Elastic Stack, um, at the core of everything we do, we have uh, Elasticsearch, and that's what stores and allows you to search your data. Um, below that, as I mentioned earlier, we have many connectors and integrations to get your data into Elasticsearch. Uh, so you have FileBeat, MetricBeat, AutoBeat, et cetera. There's several of them. Uh, go to our page. You'll see all the various ways to get the, the data in. Um, and on top of Elasticsearch, you have Kibana. Uh, Kibana allows you to explore, visualize your data, um, and take action on it. Uh, the beauty of the, the stack is you have a, a central platform uh, that you have that has uh, multiple solutions. Uh, so you have security obs obser uh, obser observability enterprise search um, that allows you to slice and dice your data as you uh, as you need, um, and it's all already in the Elastic Search. So it's it's really powerful to just leverage uh, the stack natively uh, to dice your data. Um, so you wouldn't have an InfoSec team if you didn't have challenges. Um, I think all of us uh, are familiar with that. Uh, but we are globally distributed um, by design. Uh, so we have over 3,000 elasticians in 42 different countries. Um, uh, so one of the challenges that we have, we don't have a kind of a central network where everyone connects into. So we need to get all the different data sources so we can make sure that the folks connecting in are the appropriate elasticians. Uh, and we have to collect all the uh, various data sources from the different cloud providers, feed them into the stack. So we have quite a bit of, of data feeding into our stack. Um, and, uh, and our detection team ensures that uh, they're taking action on anything that might be malicious. <clears throat> As you can see here, we have uh, our, our kind of operating procedure is we, we have uh, dedicated Elasticsearch clusters for uh, different workloads. Um, and uh, we try to 
to keep it this way to make it a little easier for us to scale and keep track of what cluster is what. But the beauty of uh, Elasticsearch is uh, we have uh, a, a feature called cross cluster search, uh, which allows us to have one um, Elasticsearch cluster act as the main search head. Um, this has the ability to connect into all the various Elasticsearch clusters that you may have and return the data. So our detection team uses this uh, to build all the detections. We also use it to uh, to help us with all of our metrics uh, because it has the ability to go to all the individual clusters. You no longer have to go into the individual clusters to search, uh, you know, heartbeat, heartbeat per se. You can just go to one stop, one, one place and, and search it. Um, so here's exactly how we used to maintain that environment. <clears throat> so behind the scenes, you have uh, everything, as I mentioned, is in Kubernetes. Uh, and we have eight different clusters. Uh, in the past, we would uh, go into the, each of the clusters, uh, deploy the, 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 the values file uh, using Helm. Um, and then uh, kick it off, and we would do this eight eight times, so rinse and repeat. Uh, the the issue with that was uh, if issues came up, it, we would have to then go back to that cluster. Um, I've never done this, but I think there's I've heard someone do it. They actually deployed the wrong configurations to the the wrong the the, the wrong cluster. Uh, so we built guardrails to protect against that. Uh, but what the beauty of Argo does is instead of us having to go into individual clusters and deploy it. Um, we develop a, a, a kind of a workflow to deploy the changes using GitHub. We have someone from security operations, I'm sorry, so the security engineering team, review the change, merge it, and Argo automatically um, knows whether a project is out of sync. Um, and then uh, we would be able to easily vi visualize that in Argo CD and kick that off and automatically uh, Argo would take action and upgrade our environment. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, we're constantly upgrading uh, a, a a lot of what we do is upgrading and pushing configuration changes because we're constantly testing our products uh, early on. Uh, so it can lead to some unexpected behaviors. And the beauty of having Argo is that we know when those issues occur and we can easily go in and try to isolate it or resolve or rebuild a cluster. Um, and rebuilding a cluster is very simple uh, with this deployment uh, methodology. Uh, so we have uh, Argo alerts um, in that back corner over there telling us what action is taken whether or not the deployment um, is uh, synced correctly or there's failures that goes into our Slack channel where we monitor our, our alerts uh, from Argo CD, also alerts from Kibana because uh, we still use the stack as an observability tool um, and all that goes into our Slack channel for us to take action on. So this is our Argo journey. Uh, we started off with an initiative called Self-Healing Infrastructure. Uh, our main goal there was to take alerts that are generated out of Kibana that we were high fidelity alerts that something was wrong um, and have a, mach a machine or a mechanism automatically take action. A good example of this was uh, we had a shard that uh, that was kind of um, that went from uh, green to yellow. Uh, and if we could automatically go in and have a, a, a mechanism do a sync or try to uh, adjust it and, and, and fix that shard, why not do it instead of us manually having to run it uh, in an uh, API script? Um, so we started going down that path. We realized that Argo had the ability to manage uh, Kubernetes resources and also had the ability to take uh, um, commands uh, from uh, a webhook and take action on it. So we started experimenting with Argo events. Um, we did. Uh, we we resolved the, uh, that case I just talked. I was talking about the uh, about the shard being tied up. Uh, but when we took it a step further, and we were like, uh, could it take uh, action on other resources? Um, and next thing you know, we started to uh, um, see if Argo could help us with our certificate management, where we had expired certificates. Um, and since we we're running Elastic Cloud and Kubernetes, uh, that automatically handles our certificates. But if something is about to expire, it used to be a manual effort for us to kick it off. And we decided to uh, to use Argo. So we moved that to production and they started handling some of our production workloads and, and fixing it, uh, fixing our workloads. Um, and then we, we were like, since it could take action on our resources, why not allow Argo to automatically help us with all of our upgrades and configurations? So we then made a change to automatically have our Argo uh, kick off upgrades um, as we merge code. Um, I say, I'll take that back. It's not necessarily automatically. There's still a sync process, which we haven't got. We haven't had the faith yet to have Argo kick it off yet. But that is on our project uh, our roadmap, um, as we'll discuss a little later. But it is managing all of our clusters, and it tells us whether it's in sync, out of sync, um, and we're getting uh, a lot of uh, 
Argo notifications in regards to what actions it's taken. Um, and as I just mentioned there, I just uh, revealed that we're using Argo notification. Um, this, in combination with Kibana alerts, gives us full uh, visibility of what's happening in our environment. Uh, so I'm going to turn it over to Chris, who's going to do a deep dive in, uh, in some of those use cases I mentioned above. Hey, folks. So here we're going to do a deep dive on different use cases that we use also different uh, parts of the Argo suite. So the first one, as Angel mentioned, is the cross-class search, search certificates. So our closed cluster search configuration is very important to us, especially for the incident analysts that have a one single place to go into and search across clusters so they don't have to go into different clusters. So it is important for us to keep it at least 24-7, 365 a days available for the users. And one thing is that on a yearly basis, there is, or more frequent basis, there is a certificate that needs to be refreshed to be able to have the head cluster connected to the remote cluster. So all our endpoints are monitored using heartbeat and Kibana uptime. And we had an alert where prior to Argo, we had an alert whereby once the certificate is going to expire within 15 days, we get a Slack notification say, hey folks, your certificate is going to expire within uh, 15 days, please update and also create a GitHub alert for us to be able to take that action and into our sprint. So what we've done and what Argo gives us the flexibility to, to do is to automate the whole um, creation and upgrading of this certificate. So using an Argo workflow and event, once the certificate is going to expire, Kibana triggers the Slack alert, but also trigger Argo to be able to in parallel create an alert and upgrade all clusters with the new certificate. On top of that, we went a step further. So we integrated also Tynes, which is a no, no automation code platform, whereby we created a bot, which we call a Kenji bot, um, very, uh, very creative. So basically, uh, with, with a basic slash command, we can, uh, we call Tynes bot, and that Tynes triggers the same Argo webhook that the Kibana alert, the Kibana alert trigger. So now we have two um, areas whereby we can trigger this Argo and only use Argo workflows UI to be able to see sort of the green traffic lights from the blue to, to yellow and understand uh, that make sure that the wor workflow has successful run and if not, see um, what, what went wrong. Moving on to the next use case, Within InfoSec, we are uh, we are minded to be as transparent as possible. And one of the use cases within InfoSec, and for sure those who work in InfoSec has heard of customer security questionnaire. Basically, it's a questionnaire that a prospective client sends to, a, to an organization for security reasons with different security questions. And what we've tried to do, sorry, is to make all our information and all our questions as public as possible across Elastic. So we have this CATS service customer assurance services search that have this data available to all uh, to all Elastic folks. And at the behind the scenes, this is all managed you're using Argo to make it, to keep it up to date. And the next slide will show how uh, how it works. So basically. Everything is in GitHub once an InfoSec creates a PR and this merge GitHub uh, via GitHub webhook, uh, Argo is triggered. And Argo then downloads the latest version of GitHub via a Ruby script that uh, we're using by the CSA, the Cloud Security Alliance uh, repository published. Uh, automatically, we push the new content or the, the latest uh, version to Elasticsearch and also to AppSearch, which uh, which leveraged the service uh, we previously illustrated in the previous slide. On top of that, we're using the CAIQ uh, Excel sheet, also published by the CSA, um, which basically tried to be a little bit more proactive. So basically, once this data is updated, Argo creates the Excel sheet and via Ruby, this Excel sheet is created and updated. Then we push it to a cloud storage bucket. And then 
Argo refreshes the self-service compliance portal that we make this Excel sheet publish to all Elastic, uh, Elastic sales folks uh, to be able to share it with, with a prospective client. The next, and I think the most important use case for us is the Argo CD Elasticsearch deployment and configuration upgrades. Again, as An Angel mentioned, uh, the sort of, we're not going to into the detail of how Argo CD works because everything is public, documentation is very thorough and it's very useful and it would be useless for us to go into deep life here. So basically the process would be once a security engineer raises a PR, which would include either an upgrade or a conflict change for the cluster, that PR is reviewed by a second engineer. And then once merged, Argo will notice that uh, there is a new version of, uh, of the configuration. And at this point, any config changes or any upgrades within the clusters will still push the sync button. We have a, a side process that's reusing the, uh, the automation sync, which works impressively. But for now, for the critical infrastructure for us, we're still using the sync. At that point, once we trigger the sync, we trigger an Argo notification to our Slack. And all of this, we're using an application set. So basically, all our configuration, again, is in GitHub, both from the git cluster ips names etc the ham chart etc within this application set we're also highlighting what argo notifications we want to send to our slack message we're not using the full-fledged alerts because kirban already provides quite a monitoring data for us but we want we want it a little bit more and argo cd is um giving us this opportunity to make a whole visibility of the infrastructure. And then the final Hemchart deployment, again, everything is within GitHub. And the addition of that is, apart from before we went to also go into each cluster to check the logs, we check everything within, within Argo CD UI for all clusters, we check the logs and uh, the bug where something happens wrong and we just everything within Argo CD and one stop shop for us. The next use case is again, as we mentioned, Argo notifications, which provide us the gap, fills up the gap data for the monitoring site. What Kibana doesn't provide us. Um, now we're monitoring with Argo, especially also Mar Argo per se, because we notice that sometimes Argo is under provisioned, it's not keeping up with all the changes. So we were able to notice with everything within Argo notifications. And so these are some of the use cases that that we have. Within Elastic also we have a, uh, a process which whereby on a weekly basis, each team provides a feedback or an overview of what has happened over the week. It's not from InfoSec, but from all teams within InfoSec, which provide again, the full transparency that we work with in Elastic. And over the weeks that we've been mentioning Argo, CD Argo events, one of the one of the biggest teams within Elastic, which is the cloud engineering, started to reach out to us. Hey folks, how what do you think about Argo, Argo CD? How do you implement it, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And over this collaboration within the two different teams and other teams within Elastic, we start Elastic, we started the Argo CD project guild, uh, which is an internal Elastic community where on a monthly basis we meet up, we share ideas, we share knowledge, we share what we've done, what we're doing, and feedback to expand our knowledge internally within, um, based on Argo CD, and especially the cloud, which have a much bigger roadmap on their, uh, on their release to expand the Argo. Yeah, so as Chris, Chris mentioned, um, it was great to partner with the cloud security team. Uh, they're going to start leveraging this, and they have a lot more infrastructure to deal with than we do. Um, so it's, it'll be good to get their ideas and you know, how they're using it. Um, so 
that is, that is going to be part of our future roadmap of uh, kind of working together, understanding how they're using Argo and, and continue leverage those use cases. Uh, but uh, anyone familiar with uh, Kubernetes um, probably knows that uh, secrets are not necessarily the, the easiest to manage. Uh, so one of the things that we're trying to do is uh, integrate the Vault plugin. Uh, so hopefully we can kind of automate that process because uh, right now it's quite tedious. We're still leveraging uh, a manual make file process uh, to manage that. Uh, but uh, another important thing that we, we wanted to do is continue um, building our Slack end, our sec end bot. Um, and, and that is going to help us with a lot more of the automated uh, tasks. And um, we want to be able to just go into Slack to say, take X action and have Argo do it for us. Um, and a good example is what Chris mentioned earlier in regards to automatically saying delete this certificate and then deploy it to all the clusters. Uh, we have other use cases that we're going to start using um, Argo for. Um, so we're going to continue building on that. And I think most importantly, uh, once we uh, do additional testing and have uh, our comfort uh, up on uh, automatically uh, doing syncs, um, we're going to enable that and make sure we have the monitoring to catch any issues and tie it back to our self-healing infrastructure if there are issues. Hopefully, we can have Argo remediate those issues. Um, and uh, I, I think the big win for us, too, is the Argo community has been great. Uh, when we're building some centers, we had folks uh, chime in uh, and give us uh, some support, uh, you know, immediate support. So kind of thank you, everyone, uh, enough for that. Um, and I'm hoping that we can keep that going and continue to contribute. Um, so join the channel, uh, raise issues, and submit PRs. Um, you know, let's make uh, Argo successful because it's, it surely has made us successful and we're very uh, thankful for that. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, that, that completes our uh, session. Uh, if there's any questions, we'd be happy to, to take those. Um, if we don't get to those questions and folks want to reach out to us, feel free. Uh, we have our contacts up here. And uh, again, thank you for spending 30 minutes with us and, uh, uh, and thank you for your time. Thank you, folks.